So this is really just a test to get a feel for how complicated it would be to stand up a Kubernetes multi-node cluster uh, and deploy uh, an app and put up a dashboard. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my kind friend, kind, to bring up a um, multi-node, three worker node, two controller node, Kubernetes cluster on my desktop or laptop. Um, and then install the dashboard, install an app with uh, six replicant copies in that and install the dashboard and then have the dashboard show me what's happening and what's deployed in my cluster. So we'll see how hard this is because I really didn't play this out. So first thing we're going to do is I already have kind installed um, and I have Docker installed and now I'm going to install Kubernetes. And the easiest way for me to do that, ooh, let's not do that. So if we look here, I actually have this file threeworkers.yaml. So if I, and that's actually just says we're going to deploy five nodes. It's a kind config file, kind of a kind config file. So I'm going to run that and this is going to bring up a cluster. And what I'm actually going to do is pause. So that took two minutes and 30 seconds to basically spin up a five node Kubernetes cluster that I can play with on my machine. So let me see here, cube, oop, cube CTL get nodes. So we can see we have five nodes here. All right, so I've got a five node cluster that's been deployed in two and a half minutes. And now I'm going to deploy six copies of Nginx, six replicant copies. I don't actually have a load balancer or anything set up for this. So we will just do that. I have a Nginx six node deployment that's available to me. And we can see there that I copied and pasted too much. So let's get rid of that. And done. That's crazy fast. So let's do um, cube CTL get deployments. Oh, we're in the default namespace. So let's do this. Let's do so we can see none of them are ready yet. Um, and so they are still in the process of deploying. Oh, and now they're all ready. All right. And if you want, I can show you real quick Docker PS, and we can see that actually our Kubernetes cluster is running as five Docker containers, and then the Docker containers for Nginx were all actually deployed inside of those, so it's Docker and Docker, that whole hyper thing. All right, so I'm going to pause here real quick, and then I will come back with the commands for bringing up the dashboard. You know what? Let's just try it. So I'm going to come over here and grab some text from one of these. So in this case, I'm actually going to download the dashboard and run and run uh, da dashboard command and run it. All right. So I have everything's been created. Um, and now, so one of the things with the dashboard is you actually, um, if I were to, you actually have to run this with uh, service accounts and the default one doesn't have any permission to actually access the dashboard. So what I'm gonna do is cube CTL get service accounts. So you can see all we have is the default one. I'm actually wanna create a new um, service account. I'm gonna call it dashboard admin SA. So this is all actually from the tutorial from the Kubernetes team. So. We're just going to create a service account called Dashboard Admin SA. That happened pretty quickly. And then uh, what I'm going to do, that we can see now that um, there's a, another service account on here, Dashboard Admin SA, right? And then I'm going to actually create a role and bind that role. I'm going to use the Dashboard Admin role and bind it to this Dashboard Admin SA account. So cube control, create a binding between this SA account with this role admin and we're going to bind it to those two. So that created the binding. 
right? And if I wanted to see the but dashboard uh, binding, it would be pretty straightforward. I can just do this. And you can see here that we have a service account. I, here I said, get the service accounts, this one, and give me the YAML version. We can see it's been created. Now here's the important part. So when you want to log into a dashboard, you basically um, need to use a token or you got to use a new username and password. You got our certificates, that kind of thing. So in this case, I'm going to use a token. It's told me that the token name, the secret, is actually this. So um, now I actually need to get the secret from that secret name. So the way this works is you... Um, I'm gonna, so this, this part changes every time. So every time you do this, you got to run the command, grab out the token name and then uh, use the token. So here I'm going to do 6FQWT. So you can see this token here, right? So I'm actually going to copy this token. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a new window. And then I'm going to go to the... Oh, and then I got to run the... Bring up the proxy, cube CTL proxy. So you have to do that because if you want this to be visible, all these components are only visible inside the network. So you got to run the proxy. So I ran, I got the token, then I ran the proxy, and I got the token before I ran the proxy because the proxy locks up the terminal window, right, because it's blocking. And then um, I, I'm going to just, there's a standard URL for this. It's actually off the API server. So as you saw here, we're going to get this through the API server. So the dashboard URL, we're proxying everything through the API server, right? So if we paste and go to this, we get here. And um, you can see, let's do that. So we can see that we need a token, right? So if I go back to the terminal window and I grab this entire token, And I come over here and I paste it on this line and I hit sign in. Then you can see this is the data. This is actually pretty cool, I think, uh, but I'm biased. So I'm going to shrink this down so I won't get confused as to what you can see and what you can't. All right. So if we pull up this console, you can see this is the Kubernetes dashboard. I apologize for the clipping. I tried to keep the print big, but make this 720p. Um, so we have a bunch of namespaces here. We're currently in the default namespace, which is not where the Nginx is deployed in the default. But we can still in this namespace go see certain things like we can go look at the nodes and we could drill in on a node. And if we looked at the node, we could see the different pieces that are deployed on that node. Right. So in this particular node, we've got some of the Nginx deployments on that node. And then we've got some kind services, some cube services and we've got a metric scraper right it's for the dashboard so every one of these nodes has got a metric scraper in it so if i were if i were to go back up here right and pick so you can see we have the different namespaces here if i go to the nginx i deployed <laughs> if only i could drive the mouse right if i go to this domain which is the Nginx namespace. So all the apps are partitioned by namespace. And then I go and look in deployments. I can see the Nginx deployment, right? Because the Nginx deployment was inside the Nginx namespace. When I go to that deployment, we can see it's a rolling update. So I can actually redeploy these. It'll do a rolling update if I want it to. And I can change these values here. Um, the pod status, there's currently six out there, six available, six that have been updated. And if we come down in here, you can see there's no old replica sets, any of that, right? So um basically and then you can see kind of the condition of this cluster so i just wanted to show that you can also look at the pods in this namespace so there's actually six pods here right because i did six deployments on three nodes and you can drill into any of these deployments if you want to right so this one's sitting on dev worker two if I were to come down here and pick one at random, this one's sitting on Dev Worker 3. So that's it, right? You get this the important thing to make this work is pick the right namespace when you're looking because I blew like 10 minutes point looking at this. So that's it. In basically 10 minutes, we built a Kubernetes cluster 
well, 12 minutes, we built a Kubernetes cluster, we deployed an app in it, we installed the dashboard, and we went to the dashboard, and I showed you how to use tokens. I hope that's useful. Bye.